Hi, I'm JJ from Cuisine on Locale. Today we're going to be making oven roasted tomatoes. These are a wonderful sweet tomato that you can use for months. They last in the fridge for a really long time. They're great on pizzas, in pasta, draped across scones for a canapé. They've got all kinds of uses. This is Ruby, my lovely and talented assistant, who's going to be helping us today with the time. So to make oven roasted tomatoes, the first thing you want to do is choose a nice firm tomato, a red tomato, but not too ripe because you don't want it to be too soft so that it'll hold up in the oven. I like plum tomatoes because they have a lot of flesh to them. They're not all seeds. And the first thing you need to do is peel these tomatoes. So what we're going to do is score them in a light X, just enough to cut through the skin across the pointy end, not the stem end of the tomato, like so. I like a, a, a very sharp serrated knife to do this. It doesn't bludgeon the tomato too much and it cuts the skin without cutting too deeply into the flesh, which is what you want. Blanching is a process of plunging food into rapidly boiling water for about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the food. This is the best way to get skins off tomatoes. It's also a very good way to get skins off of stone fruit, like peaches, nectarines, and apricots. So you drop your tomatoes into the water. Mommy? Yes? Why do you put X's on them? The reason you put the X's on them, Ruby, is so that when the skins start to peel back, they split at the X's and it makes them easier to peel once they've been blanched. That's a very good question. Okay, the skins are starting to pull back a little bit where I cut those X's. And you can see where the skins have started to split apart and pull away. And uh, those X's give the hot water an entrance to get under the skin and start to split it. I'm going to run these under cold water so I don't burn my fingers. Now, you'll see the skins of these tomatoes now are just going to slip right off. Really easy. Much easier than trying to peel a tomato. Some of them are going to be easier than others. It kind of depends on how ripe the tomatoes are. Um, the more ripe they are, the easier it is for that hot water to get underneath the skins and start the process. These are kind of like leaves on these times. Yeah, let's talk about those leaves. What Ruby's doing over here is she's taking the leaves off of some stems of fresh thyme. Thyme is one of the uh, things we're going to use to flavor these tomatoes when we put them yeah. into the oven to roast them. Right. Right. Once you've got the skins off, the next thing that you're going to do is cut the stem end out of the tomato. Does it then taste bad? <laughs> yeah, this part gets a little hard, doesn't it? Yeah. You take those out. Then you're going to cut them <clears throat> into quarters lengthwise. And with your fingers, very gently, remove the seeds and the excess liquid from the tomatoes. But the important thing is not to lose too much of the inside of the flesh of them. You want to keep that core, but you want to get rid of the excess seeds and juice. Once you have all of your tomatoes peeled and cored, and you've gotten rid of all of the liquid that you can get rid of in them so that they're as dry as they can be, you're going to lay them out on a baking sheet. And you don't want them to touch each other too closely. So you might need to use two baking sheets if you have a lot of tomatoes. This is parchment paper, which is uh, just to line the baking sheet so that the tomatoes don't stick to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold a little lip all the way around the parchment paper so that the juice, because there will still be some juice from these tomatoes and also from, all, from olive oil and stuff like that, so that the juice doesn't run off and then cause them to stick to the pan. So I'm just going to fold the parchment paper around the edges a little bit. So those are kind of the guards? Yeah, <laughs> they are. They're the tomato guards. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tomatoes. Can I help? Yeah, you can. Thanks. We're going to take the tomatoes and we're going to lay them cut side down. So this outside up in rows. Okay. 
along the baking sheet. Like this? That's exactly right. Thanks. So you keep laying them all out until the whole pan is full. Now, you season the tomatoes with garlic, thyme. Thank you for the towel. You're welcome. And olive oil and salt and pepper. Salt and pepper? Yep. This is fresh garlic, and fresh garlic is quite uh, moist compared to the kind of garlic that you find in the supermarkets that's been sitting around for a really long time. It's sweeter, less, uh, less hot, and really great when it's in season, which in the Northeast is pretty much all through the summer. Now that we've peeled all the garlic, I'm going to chop tomatoes. it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to chop the garlic. Quite finely. I want it pretty fine. And I'm actually going to throw the thyme in there with it and chop that a little bit as well so that it's help. pretty fine. Do you think I you can, can do this? That one? Yep. Good job. This is a uh, very rich olive oil. Rich? Yeah, very flavorful olive oil. I'm going to drizzle the tomatoes with olive oil first. I pretty, do some. A pretty liberal drizzling of olive oil. I'm going to let you salt. It's a pretty liberal drizzling of olive oil. Um, so um, we put olive oil on so the salt and pepper can stick. Good job. Can you get this corner over here? Just a light sprinkling of salt. Now you're going to take your minced garlic and thyme and crumble it all over the tomatoes. The great secret to this recipe is powdered sugar. And a good trick for powdered sugar, if you don't have one of those powdered sugar sprinkling devices lying around your house, a uh, great trick for powdered sugar is to just put it in a sieve or any kind of very fine mesh strainer. You want to put a very, very liberal sprinkling of powdered sugar on the tomatoes. Quite a heavy sprinkling of powdered sugar. You preheat your oven to 250 degrees. It's pretty low heat. This is a very long, slow process. And you put them in the oven for four hours. You'll see they've caramelized in some places. That's the sugar doing its work. And uh, they've gotten quite dark and quite tiny. When the tomatoes are all done, Gather them up. Make sure you get all those wonderful pieces of garlic and thyme that got caramelized along with the tomatoes because mm, those bits are so good. And put them in a bowl or a jar, whatever you want to keep them in. Make sure you get all those wonderful bits. And then... You want to cover them with olive oil. And what's going to happen as they sit and soak in that olive oil is they're actually going to mellow and get more sweet. And the flavors of all that garlic and thyme are going to blend even more with the tomatoes. I think they're even better a couple days after you make them. Now these can be covered and stored in the fridge and used on just about anything that needs a tomato.